Are you hungry? <laughs> I'll take that as a yes. Hi, Indigo. Indigo, you are like the Fabio of horses. I can't believe it's not bothering me. You ever have that one kid? Honey, is that your mini me? I know how you feel, girl. Welcome to the Rainbow Valley Chicken Maternity Ward. I know what you're thinking, Rachel. You have a problem. Houston, we have a problem. But who doesn't love a baby chick? I mean, come on. Actually, the purpose of this setup is for breeding. I want to get into specialty breeding. The corner stall over there is where I'm going to be putting together specific hens and roosters for the purpose of producing hatching eggs that we will sell. And of course, hatching a few cuties ourselves. The purpose of the hutch is actually in the future just going to be a place where I can break them of their broodiness because it's got the wire hardware cloth at the bottom so I can keep their underside cool um, and keep them from stealing all of our eggs. But it's dual purpose. It can work as a little infirmary if I need to separate a chicken that's wounded or if on occasion I just need to hatch a few chicks. I plan to hatch out babies every spring to keep our egg layer population up. I like to have enough eggs for us and then enough to give away. I really love giving eggs away to people. I just love the joy it brings them. Mostly I just want to produce different color eggs. <laughs> I mean, this is Rainbow Valley. We should have rainbow eggs. It only makes sense. So a quick update on Miss Honey and her crew. I left the four eggs that were unhatched in the nest for about four days. And I checked on them periodically and repositioned them under her when she would move um, to another part of the hutch. I came out one day and one of the eggs was missing. I started searching around in the shavings a little and the oddest thing there was a baby chick, and it had passed away. But the shell was totally picked clean all around it. The chick itself was not pecked, but the shell was nowhere to be found. I think Honey tried to help the baby chick out, but unfortunately, we lost all those babies. So, we will not be making that mistake again. From now on, all eggs have to go under a broody at the same time. The other four are doing great. However, I think one of them potentially has a little pasty butt. For those of you who don't know, pasty butt is really just chick diarrhea. I think pasty butt is a nicer word for it. And that can happen when the baby chick is stressed out, usually with a fluctuation of temperature. So you get that more in your chicks that are shipped in. You have to watch them 
several times a day, make sure that they don't have any of that stuck to um, their down feathers because it can block their their vent and prevent them from um, having their bowel movements, I think is the nicest way to put that. That actually can become very dangerous for them and it can actually kill them. So you have to really monitor it. I think what may have happened when we were building this new little stall underneath the hutch, there was a gap that I didn't realize was there and somehow Honey got out and couldn't get back in so she could not keep her babies warm. And I think that was probably about an hour or so that they were out from underneath her and since they're so young, that probably caused a little bit of stress. So we remedied that situation, but I think we're gonna have to keep an eye on this baby. And the trickiest part, however, is going to be catching that little bird. Look at this big brother over here. This was one of the first babies that we initially hatched out. He is a rooster. We found out a couple days ago he came out of the roo closet. But all three of those babies will sit here at the fence and pace back and forth longingly because they so badly want to get back to their mama. I find that so interesting. I didn't think that a chicken would really even recognize their mama at this point. One night I came out to close the coop up and Penelope was nestled in her dust bath with her babies and one of her babies from the first hatch managed to get in the stall and was curled up with mama inside this little box. Did you lay an egg? Congratulations. Are you proud of yourself? So I thought I had the camera on, but apparently I did not. So I was able to catch that baby, and while she does have droppings stuck to her down feathers, they're not blocking up her vent. Her vent is open. So she's okay. We'll just keep an eye on her, but she's just fine. Either Mama will preen her, or brothers and sisters will preen her. Do you know if you let a radish continue to grow that this is what it turns into? I did not know this. Look at that. It's huge. I adore these sunflowers. These are the giant primrose from Baker Creek Heirloom. We had to come in and thin out this bed because it was so full, mostly of the borage. The borage really did well. It's a pretty hardy plant, but check it out. Look what we found underneath. We do in fact have some tomatoes. These are cherries, so we should not have any problem harvesting them before winter. The vision that I have for this area or that Mark and I have goes along with the theme of the ranch, which we're going to be talking about in a future video. This area is going to be the playground for the camp and the goal is to have a lot of fruit trees, strawberry plants, raspberry bushes, hopefully blueberry bushes, that our campers can come and pick right off the plant while they're playing. talking about. 
came out to check on the chicks, collect some eggs. And who would you think got himself over that fence and in the pen with Mama? He's just sitting here. He's not hurting the babies. Just wants to be with Mama. <laughs> Penelope, you must be a very good Mama. I guess I would want to cuddle up to that much fluff too if I were a baby chick. I find this hilarious. Look at this guy. What are you doing? You are not little anymore, mister. <laughs> well, I guess I'll keep them all safe. <laughs>